I'm finding the energy. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the live show um, for All is Well by Mona Awad. Uh, before I introduce my co-hosts, I would love a little thumbs up if you've read the book. Um, maybe, a, I don't know, a skull if you haven't read the book, so we know he's here to hang out. Um, if just a quick little update, if you didn't see the most recent announcement this month, we are currently reading My Heart is a Chainsaw by Stephen Graham Jones. And next month, we're reading The Death of Jane Lawrence by Caitlin Starling. So look forward to those live shows too. Um, so yeah, I just want to engage. Okay, I feel like it's a good mix of have, I mean, it's always a mix of like have read and haven't read. I also want to know like if you need to be convinced of the book. So like, are you here for the first couple minutes to like decide if you want to read it or not? Because we'll we'll do our best. Um, I usually have my co-hosts introduce themselves, their channel, and their favorite thrillers. So let me kick it off. Hi, my name's Kayla. Uh, this is my channel, Books and Lala. My favorite thrillers are, oh God, um, Gone Girl, The Kind Worth Killing, When No One Is Watching, The Turn of the Key, and Lock Every Door. Aaron, go. <laughs> it was like a lot of lost time. <laughs> Hi, friends. My name is Erin. My channel is Books and Busy. I am predominantly a fantasy reader, but a couple of the mystery thriller horrors I like are um, Only Daughter by Anna Snow Extra, One by One by Ruth Ware, and most recently, like a horror, will be House of Leaves by uh, Mark Z. Danielewski. Um, uh, hi everyone, I'm Jenny. I'm from the channel The Story Ain't Over. Um, I mostly read fantasy and like YA contemporary, so thriller is definitely a genre that I don't pick up that often, but I brought two that I love. So I don't know if this counts, but If We Were Villains by Emma Rio, um, yes, I absolutely, absolutely love. Um, and then I also really, really love anything by Tiffany D. Jackson because they're like contemporaries with like a thrilling twist. Um, so Grimm is probably my favorite. Um, yeah. Those are great picks. I feel like um, a lot of times Tiffany D. Jackson doesn't get put into the thriller category, mm -hmm. um, but I can I absolutely consider her books to be thrillers. Yeah, I think that's a great one. Um, since it's Jenny's first time here, uh, that her introduction is having to having to explain the plot of All's Well to all of us. So, <laughs> Jenny, take it away. <laughs> this is cruel and unusual punishment. Um, so. Oh, wow. I tried to explain this in like multiple videos and I was like, I stumbled over every time and I explained it differently every time. But basically it follows our main character, Miranda, who is a college drama professor um, with chronic pain. And I feel like a, a lot of the story sort of revolves around her relationship with her chronic pain and um, how it affects her life. Um, and so she, being the professor of this class, um, is trying to put on a production of All's Well That Ends Well by Shakespeare, um, but her class is very bent on putting on a production of Macbeth instead because they like it better and they don't really understand uh, all as well that ends well um, and the appeal of it. And um, the book sort of has a bit of a like speculative twist to it when uh, Miranda starts to get some supernatural help, I would say, um, with her troubles. And yeah, it just gets crazy from there. That's a great explanation. I was trying to figure out like what um, what genre to even put this in because I originally mm -hmm. picked it for the book club because I thought it was horror. Um, I'm also going to ask you next what other Mona Awads you you've read. Um, Bunny obviously is one of my favorite books of all time, and it's horror. And so I kind of assumed that this one was going to be in the same vein. But looking at like the publisher talking about it, they don't really mention horror related to it. So I feel kind of bad. Um, I feel like this this is kind of what happened with Catherine House last year is I made all of you read a book that um, just like didn't fully fit the book club vibe, but I think a lot of us had a lot of fun with it, so it's fine. I wanna call this um, surrealism or like fabulism mm -hmm. or, you know, the word I, I, I wanna call it absurdist. That I think is a good vibe for it because it like starts out realistic and then it gets weird. So um, yeah. yeah, tell me about your other, if you have, uh, experience with other Mona awards and what have you, how does it, how might it compare? Feel free to share in the comments too. I would love to see what everybody thought of like how this compares to Bunny and feel free to give your, your ratings right now. I don't know what you two rated this book. So I'm ready. I'm ready to hear. 
coming into the live show, I have not rated the book yet because for me, it was a similar experience to House of Leaves where I finished and I was like, where was I on drugs? I feel that. Did I accidentally take a little acid or something? Because I kept asking myself, like, did this happen? In my mind, did it happen on the page? But was it real on the page? So we haven't read it yet. But by the end of the, the, the um, House of Leaves live show, I had given the book five stars. So who knows? <laughs> <laughs> what might happen? And it's also my uh, first Mona Award, but I'm going to be reading Bunny later on this month. Oh, okay. I thought it might have been your first, but I couldn't, for some reason, I couldn't remember if you had read Bunny. I do not rate books on the regular anymore. You know what? So, right? But I, I would say that I enjoyed it more than I thought I would. I did think it was very when I initially picked it up and when I like put it on my want to reach up, I thought it was something very, very different. And when I agreed to this, I thought it was going to be a very different oh book. Oh my God. And, uh, oh, and then when I started reading it, I was like, oh, I don't think I'm going to like this. Um, but then I ended up really enjoying it. And I think it's because I had like kind of low expectations going into it. So by the end of it, I was like, I love this. Like, this is fantastic. I enjoyed myself and like, I had a lot to think about. So if I had to rate it, like it would probably be like a solid four stars. I love that. I'm surprised by actually the amount of um, high ratings here. For some reason, <laughs> I thought I thought it was going to be like twos across the board. I was a little bit worried coming in here. Um, not that I hated it by any means, but for me, it's like a solid just in the middle three and a half. I appreciate so much of what it had to say, and I don't feel like I actually have that many negative things to say about it. Like. A lot of times in these live shows, we talk about like the plot and the characters and the storylines and like things we liked and things we didn't. And I, for, on one hand, I really don't feel like this book is even conducive to those types of conversations because there's not, this just doesn't follow a, a typical trajectory of writing style that we talk about a lot in these live shows. Um, but when it comes to like things I don't like about it, I don't actually have a big list of things. It's just like, it was a little underwhelming just in general mm -hmm. for me, but that's, coming into it thinking this is going to be like one of my new favorite books of all time. And I'm sure there's something to say about expectations. Uh, well, what did you, what did you think it was going to be? <laughs> like, okay, so this is just me not like listening or paying attention properly, but I, I think I read the description vaguely. Um, and I saw the cover and I thought it was gorgeous. So that's probably why I added it to my good read shelf to begin with, without even like looking at the description. But since it was part of the book club, I thought it was like a thriller or a horror, like one of those two. And so for some reason, I thought it was going to be more of a thriller. And then I started reading the description and I saw something about college and university and Macbeth. And I was like, oh, this is going to be a dark academia. Like there's going to be murder by the end. And like, it's just going to be a lot of fun. So that's actually why I like initially wanted to pick it up. And then it was very different, but it worked out. I think a lot of people, yeah, yeah, I, ap I apologize to the whole world. Is there anybody who hated this book? Like, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Sometimes we get a little weird here and it's it's fine. Um, oh, also I wanted to mention um, Chanel's book club, the Crusty Book Club is also reading this. So if you want to uh, watch another live show for this book um, where people didn't expect it to be thrillers and mysteries, they went to it with the right expectations. Maybe they loved it even more, I have no idea. Um, so I will link that below after. Okay, uh, I think we're gonna get into like full spoilers throughout this entire live show. Like, I don't want to promise we're not gonna ruin anything. Uh, so I want to know. Can we really have. spoil it though? I know it's like <laughs> it just. That's what I'm saying. Like with the writing style, it wasn't like this happened and then this happened. It was just all like weird and mystical and strange. So maybe people won't mind it being spoiled. Yeah, I agree. Um, <laughs> At I'm one point, I thought there was. Well, yeah. You know, I also think a lot of things can be interpreted however you want them to be. If we're if you're already going full spoilers, I definitely thought Grace was out of here. Oh, oh yeah. She was gone. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, she really just like <laughs> I thought, she walked um, in. Oh man, I thought what did I think? I thought Miranda was probably gonna be dead by the end. I thought probably Brianna was gonna be dead by the end. I thought Grace mm. was gonna be dead, like I don't know if I thought it was going to turn into like a murderous like bloodbath. I really, I don't know. Or I thought it was going to be one of those books where like you find out that someone was dead all along, like something like that. Mm. So it's like, this is Miranda in uh, 
purgatory or something. Like, I don't know. Really, anything could have happened. And I would have been like, yeah, that makes sense for this. I also thought she killed the physical therapist guy. Uh, yeah. Me too, actually. Or like so she like, ran out of there. Really debilitated him or something. Just so like pulling around his head and yep. like <laughs> I was like, so he kind of deserved it. But. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we hate that guy. Okay, um, I want to know what was successful for you. Like, what do you look at this mm. book and think? Like, what was a successful theme or writing style or plot or like what what worked for you? I'll also ask what what didn't work for you, but we'll start with the positives. Um, I think it was extremely well written. And I say that because um, Miranda's pain left the page and like entered my body. Mm -hmm. I was reading it and I was listening to the audio and I remember I was on my way to work and like I have arthritis and it was raining. So like we already, you know, set up for a bad day. But as I was reading, my knees just started to throb. And my wrist just started to hurt. I was like, I can't do this right now. And I'm like, I wasn't hurting when I left the house. But like right now, like, especially like listening to it. And there are like portions where she goes on like this like litany of all of her issues. And like, is it my back? Is it my hip? Well, it's both. But it's also my leg. And it's this and it's that. And she was just, it was so well realized that like it I really believe that A, she was in pain, and I felt for her quite literally. Um, so yeah, 10 out of 10 on that part. Yeah, I would completely agree. I feel like um, the writing and like the way she described Miranda's pain was like phenomenal. Um, not only just like you feel it, but also like I, I could have like, it felt like a book that I could have studied in like one of my English classes and like mm -hmm. unpack the way that she like used different metaphors or something like for describing the pain. Like it felt um, that well written. Um, and then another thing I loved was like all the Shakespeare references, but also sort of the like weird descent of like Miranda's mental state throughout the book. Like I really enjoyed that. Uh, I love books that like have a main character whose mental state just like sort of deteriorates um, by the end even though this one had like more of a happy ending than I thought it would. Um, but yeah, I enjoyed like her sort of Lady Macbeth vibes. Kate's comment right here, it reminds me of your reading vlog of it. Yeah, it oh, was, um, yeah, it was, yeah, it was exhausting. Like I, I would never say like, that's a reason I gave it a low rating because I agree with Jenny, like I, I love when we slowly descend into like chaos and somebody just like loses their ability to think straight. Um, and I think like that is the three act structure and that's how it was so well done is the first half of the book is act one and it is so exhausting to read. It's just like you're stuck in this mind of pain and it's so well explored that you feel it. And like, that's the point. So it's just like, I see reviews that are like, oh my God, I hated reading this because it was so exhausting. And I'm like, but doesn't that equal success? Like that mm -hmm. is how the novel was successful. Um, what did I like about it? I also like the Shakespeare references. Like there, if you have a lot of um, history, not that I've studied Shakespeare or anything in a, in a high level type of way, but there are so many, like obviously anybody who's read Macbeth knows that like the three witches are the three men. Um, and like the Miranda's name comes from the Tempest, but there's also just like little things like, um, I, I guess just like the idea of healing in general is something that I found really interesting. Um, in All's Well That Ends Well, uh, Helen heals the king. And I think that that's what's cool in the book is that like we also get to explore the play. So if you have no experience with it, you do get to learn a little bit about it. And um, Helen is just like such an interesting character because she, she's like equal parts villain and heroine and she's someone that you hate, she's someone that you love and she just has so much like, um, she has such a strong sense of self and she knows exactly what she wants. And I think that um, Miranda embodies that in a lot of ways where she just like wants everyone to believe her and she's saying what she feels and like nobody understands her. And that's such an interesting main character to me. So I think that's, that's something. I actually mm -hmm. think that this would be a really interesting one to reread. Um, what else did I want to say? Oh, I liked the 
friendship elements to this. Um, mm. what, did you, what did you guys think about the friendship with Grace? I wanted Grace to be dead. Yeah, me too a little. I don't know. I have mixed feelings about her. It was like a complicated relationship. And like, I think the author sort of tried to show how, like from Grace's perspective, how she like her 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 thought process sort of changes as well. Um, like she wasn't believing Miranda at first and then she starts to realize that, oh, I was like being a bit of an ass, but I still didn't feel sorry for her because we're living in Miranda's head and we're feeling her frustration like from the beginning of just not being believed. And like, I think that was like really compelling. Um, they were like freeing me to me. Like, mm. it, also, wasn't it Favre, Favre, whoever, Fawn, whatever her name was, the other oh, one? Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. I want her to be Favre dead, Favre? too. Oh, it's a very interesting so. feeling. <laughs> very New England. I was watching a uh, an interview with the author, and I can't remember if it was the author who said it or the interviewer, but they said the quote, like, um, we can't bear each other's pain. And that's like a, a well-known quote, um, but it's also like an interesting commentary on we also can't bear each other's joy because like Grace has such a hard time when Miranda is feeling good and when she, and mm -hmm. albeit manic, um, when she is just like in her best place, Grace also has such a hard time accepting that version of her. And I think that that's such an interesting commentary. Like, when you have a friend who's dealing with chronic pain, like as that friend, you don't feel understood. But then also like when you're feeling better, it's like, oh, well, didn't, wasn't your knee hurting? Like, oh, your back is fine now. It's like, they almost can't accept or they feel like that is a, that is proof that you were faking it or something like that. Mm -hmm. I felt like Miranda's pain and like her very sad, very pitiful life almost made Grace feel better about herself because mm -hmm. in the beginning, what we saw of Grace was very put together. She was, you know, the stalwart of their community. But then by when we got to the end and we found out like all the things that Grace had going on and like kind of like the veneer was pulled back a, a little bit on like how her life isn't as glamorous. And, and maybe it was because Randy couldn't really see it because she was like blinded by her own pain. And she was like, oh, she's not really dressing the same way. You know, she's like, oh, she's not working, working out. Like she's single and, she, you know, all these things. And so my opinion of Grace changed as the story went on. It's a, it was a very interesting choice from the author to not kill off anybody, actually. Like, I, I wonder what that choice was for. I'm sure there's like an intent behind it. Because like maybe it would be too easy to just like, kill mm -hmm. the people who wrong you <clears throat> yeah i also thought it would be like hard to sort of wrap that up in a realistic way because most people did feel very sort of metaphorical and partly in miranda's head like a lot there was obviously like real world consequences but um all the supernatural stuff like wasn't technically like you couldn't prove it and miranda was the only one who knew that it was real. so i feel like if someone died then it would just be so strange that's so true. Yeah. I I thought it was really interesting how, because um, on that point, I thought that so much of it was in her head that when Grace was able to see the three men, I was like so caught off guard. Mm. When the boys were like, there are three men who were saying that they have need a seat. I was like, is he in on it too? <laughs> yeah, Does he like, have the golden elixir like the bartender? Or... <laughs> Yeah, I was like, this is really happening. Like, okay, let me like switch my perspective on this book now that all of this is actually happening. And I like how she used like repetition because I feel like in each of the three acts of the story, some of the same things just happen over and over again. They got more absurd mm -hmm. or like, because you know, when she fell off the stage, it called back to like her original injury that being the reason why she had this chronic pain is because she fell off the stage in this grand way. But she literally like fell off the stage again, she like bounced back up and she was asking herself, she was so paranoid, like, is the pain gonna come back? Am I gonna be feeling this way again? Is my leg heavier? Like, what's going on? And it's like, when you have some type of pain or you've been sick or something and you're finally feeling better again, it's always in the back of your mind. Like, will I, will this be the thing that like takes me back to that place again? Like, yeah, what did I enjoy this pain free time just a short, you know, short while? Yeah. And then like, um, you like start taking things for granted. And I feel like that was a part of the book too. 
where she was mm -hmm. like, a big theme of the book is thinking back on your old self and like thinking about that person you used to be and wanting to get back to that or um, romanticizing your old life. And that's something that you also do when you're when you're in pain is you start once you start to feel good again, you like you can drive normally and you can sit normally, and you can sleep normally and then you start to forget. And so then the second like a little bit of pain comes back, you're like, oh, my God, I should have really appreciated these last couple months of my life where I was just mm -hmm. living like nothing, nothing was wrong. OK, All I wonder, right. <laughs> what, what didn't work for you guys? Is there anything that you can pinpoint that you would have maybe liked? Well, besides all the characters dying, anything you would have liked <laughs> to be done differently? Feel free to comment. I'll pop your comments up if there's, for everyone who gave really low ratings, because obviously we didn't, um, if you want to pinpoint certain things that like you just hated or thought weren't weren't successful, I would love to hear those. I realized most recently, especially this month as in September, I'm not a big fan of open endings. Mm -hmm. um, I'm okay with some things being left open, but I think for all as well, everything was left open. Like I didn't have any firm idea of like what actually happened. And what did not like? We haven't even touched on Ellie and these little sachets uh, <laughs> of healing. Yeah, her, I'm like, is she a witch? Like, is she a witch? Weird. So I just didn't know what was real, what what wasn't, and what really happened. And like, is this the end or was this the beginning? It's so I would have liked at least one of those elements for me to have a clear understanding of what had happened. I feel that. Sally said more. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of agree with you on like the, the point of the ending. I mean, I, I, I do enjoy like open endings, but I think I was from the beginning, I was like, I don't know how this can end if it's going to be like sort of like a contemporary and has like a nice wrap up sort of ending because we're talking about her chronic pain and like this is some, like a reality that a lot of people have to sort of live with. And so it would make no sense if it just magically gets cured for all eternity. But it also feels sort of, um, I don't know, like it just feels kind of trite to like say, oh, well, you know, you just need to see like this silver lining and everything kind of ending, which is sort of how I feel like it did end. But yeah, I don't know. I, it was like slightly unsatisfying. Okay. There's something to be said for, um, that's a great point. Um, I know that there's been a lot of conversation in like the disability community with books about um, magical healing. So I'm sure mm -hmm. um, there are people who have much more eloquent thoughts than I about like the fact that at the end, she she kind of, she didn't have pain. And so like, what does that, what does that mean for the intent of the book? And like, mm -hmm. I think it's good that we didn't like flash forward or anything or have really solid answers. I will say this, the black box dream sequence, um, they didn't mm. like that. That's my fucking favorite part of this book. Like I <laughs> just when it was just like so insane. And the part where she like goes on the stage and she's like mm -hmm. thinks that, oh, that was so good for me. And when like she has Ellie as a baby or something, mm -hmm. I was like, I don't understand. And I love it. There are parts of the book where I thought Miranda had died. <laughs> like when she just walked out into the ocean. Oh yeah, and was twirling in the ocean, and she had that red dress on at the end for like the last five days of the book. I swear. Oh and my she was, god! Yeah, that was she had this major leg wound that was just bleeding profusely for days and days. But she was frolicking and twirling. And I was like, "Is she alive?" <laughs> and then she just showed up. Like they were like she had hit her head or something, and then she showed up at the theater. And I'm like, "I thought she was dead." Oh, like, but is she dead? Is she just dreaming this? Because then she's like loopy and she like goes out on the stage and she does all this weird stuff. Like Miss Fitch, where were you? She was like, I healed Brianna. <laughs> oh, yeah. Did you? Yeah, we were even talking about Brianna. Brianna was like such a oh, such God. a good character for me. I don't know if you I, guys yeah. have like favorite characters from the story, but Brianna was so good for me. Yeah, I like, love what she did with Brianna. Oh, you you had to hate her, but then you were rooting for her. Because it was like it's so sad. Yeah. 
And it, it was, I think absurd is the perfect word because the scene where she like touches Brianna's wrist and then like Bob like takes her to the to the principal's office basically and was like, she touched the student inappropriately. I know, I was, I was so like, no. oh my God. <laughs> And I was like, not to mansplain or be like, they type, I don't believe the victims, but I was there for this part. And then when he, when it's like us in the room hearing what happened, and everyone takes a collective moment, like, she touched you on the wrist, and then what happened? Mm -hmm. She just we sounded like, so crazy. Yeah. That was and so it was like mm -hmm. reflecting how Miranda was. Because in, in that time where she was better. It was like she was, these other people were who she was and nobody believed what mm -hmm. they were saying. Because when Grace was in pain, when Brianna was in pain, that meeting with the parents, like, oh, it's my leg. It was like, oh, I thought it was your hip. But it's my back too. Yep. It's so good. I love seeing that like flip. And just how like, um, sort of, because Brianna was just so cruel at the beginning um, when dealing with Miranda. And so when it gets flipped on her, she's just, it's just hilarious. But also like, I feel bad for you too. Yeah, like I, I love I love a good uh revenge fantasy. Mm -hmm. And this was more of like a I saw it described as a forced empathy fantasy. And I was like, that's what it is. Because mm. like this little bitch Brianna doesn't believe you. And you're like, no, you're gonna feel what I feel, and then you have to understand me. Like I love that. Um, okay, so I have a serious question, and as you know, you all have read it as well. So now, earlier we talked about how, you know, the possible problem of her pain magically disappearing. But I myself was concerned for a moment, like, was she actually ever in pain? Uh, yeah. I thought that too for a second. I was like, but you, but I'm so glad when um, Owad didn't go there. Cause if she, oh my God, that would have been, everyone would have hated the book if it turns out that Miranda was never in pain. Yeah, because all her doctor said it was in her head. I did, I never even thought of that. But wow, yeah. If if that was like the reveal at the end, like I would have like thrown the book across the wall. Like I would have been pissed. <laughs> Man, I don't know. Yes, it was. Yeah, it's tough because like I I was looking for a twist. If we're talking about things that I didn't love, I guess. Um, <clears throat> I know Sally just said again that um. I, I didn't find it funny. I said that in my review. Um, I did find that one scene funny in the in the teacher's office, or the principal's office. But overall, I didn't find the book funny. And I was expecting it to be like funny, funny, like really dark mm. and funny. And I think it's there's some nuanced comedy, but um, I, I maybe I just didn't get it because I didn't find it funny. Uh, I think if it was funnier or if it was there that would have been a twist that I liked. Which one? Like if if Ellie had planned this grand thing and she had put a, a hex on Miranda to make her endear her to her <laughs> and to Brianna to get her out of the way, and then she was like, "Oh, but I'm gonna save the day at the end." Like, would that have been a grand, you know, a grand plan? Okay, I love all these comments. I just want to read all of them. I'm gonna come back after and look at them all. Oh, that's such a cool theory. I think so too. You can really have any theory you want about this book. That's what's cool about it. <laughs> it's like anything that you want to be true, it could be true. Lots uh, of commentary on women not being believed in a number of circumstances all across the book. Totally. I think it's so important to tell this type of story that like, yeah, it's just really good. Con I, like I would love to make so many people read this. You did. <laughs> I just mean <laughs> you're so right. I did. I mean, how good did you read it? I mean, like in real life, like asshole men who are like. <laughs> I wish I could make you guys read it. Um, I think my last question is like, who would you recommend this to, or if somebody likes this, who? What books would you recommend them also read? Hmm. I really need to read that one. Um, I don't know if I would really recommend <laughs> Catherine House to many people. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's weirder than this one. Oh, that's. But I feel like it also has a more of a solid but very open ending as well. Mm. And there's a similar feeling of is this actually happening? And mm -hmm. a slow descent into madness. 
So there's a cultish element here. Mm. I like it. This is exactly, I haven't actually read from Otessa Mashfeg, but uh, I feel like mm. her writing style would appeal to um, Mona Watt and her have similar, similar themes and storytelling style, I think. Yeah, but the, the thing with the husband confused me too. He's like, you left me. Oh yeah. Was I was weird. tapped out of the, like at, at that point, I was like, I don't know what's going on. I'm just reading. My eyes are just moving. Like <laughs> so chaotic. I was like, what is she trying to tell us like something about the husband? Cause like, I'm not fully. And then, you know, when the months pass and he calls her and he's like, well, you haven't called me in a minute. I was just checking if yeah. she was still alive. That was weird. Follow me to ground, that's a good one too. Mm, I would recommend, okay, I would recommend In the House in the Dark of the Wood by Laird Hunt. Um, because it's like a woman just like lost and confused and also has a similar like cyclical kind of nature. Also almost at some points like felt like a fairy tale to me and this has fairy tale vibes. So I'd recommend that. And I would also recommend Empire of Wild. I feel like I haven't heard enough people talk mm. about this. It's by Sherry Demoline, who's another Canadian author. Um, uh, the Marrow Thieves is one of my favorite books. This one didn't hit the same, but it also, it has an equal quality of um, just like being lost as all as well. So I'd recommend mm -hmm. you look into that. I don't own this book, but a book that just came to me that I think if you like this book, you may like this book. And that's um, The Vegetarian mm -hmm. by Hong um, Kong. It is an extremely odd book. And it also has this that weird carnal element that Oswald also has. And it's about this woman who she has this dream one day and the dream tells her that she has to like stop eating meat. Similar almost to like Night Bitch, which is a new release. And she feels like there's like an animal or something coming out of her. And so she purges from her life. And it's, it's a translated Korean word, but everyone in her family thinks she's like going crazy because she doesn't want to eat meat. And it, it just descends into how she just feels like her whole life has to be different. Her family pressuring her to like try to eat meat. And like all these things happen. And like she goes to like an institution kind of. And it just, it's very short. It's like all day, like four or five hours. But it's as absurd and strangely written and immersive as all's will. So I think you may like that um, if you like this book. That's a good rec. I felt equally uninterested in that one. So I think somebody who somebody who loves a vegetarian could love all's well and vice versa. I think that's a great one. Jenny, do you have anything? I, I was literally trying to think again. I tried thinking of one before this. Shakespeare? Really? Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. So let's let's go with that. <laughs> let's go. Um, uh, yeah, I guess the Shakespeare references that sort of makes sense. Um, I'm trying to think of something else, but like nothing is quite like it from what I've read. Yeah. Um. One. No. No. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, the... I will recommend like anything because like I was gonna recommend like, English yeah. parts. This is why a like Shakespeare. It's nothing like it, but like it's Shakespeare. <laughs> oh my god, I, love that. I just love recommending books. I think this is a great one. Um, you'd recommend it to someone who's studying Shakespeare. I totally. Yeah, I think that'd be a fun video concept. Actually, it's like a mm -hmm. reading some Shakespeare inspired things and seeing the other references that aren't as in your face. Because I'm sure that All's Well has so many other little references that I don't even get. Mm -hmm. So, and the fact that All's Well the Ends Well is like neither is neither a comedy or a tragedy. I think this book mm -hmm. emulates it because people are like, oh, it's supposed to be funny, or yeah. I thought it would be funny, but it's not. And then we thought it would be tragic because people were gonna we thought everyone was gonna die, but they did not. Yeah, so true. Mm -hmm. My brain really is working. Sure. Oh, That's well, kind of why I didn't accept murder at the end because I was like, I have a feeling this is gonna be like All's Well that Ends Well. Yeah, that's fair. Um, I wasn't even thinking about movies, but movies, Black Swan is a, a good one. I actually haven't seen Black Swan, but I've heard a couple people make this reference, actually, that um, 
I guess it's the idea of this like obsessed artist type, um, in which case I would mm -hmm. also recommend like, it's going to seem out like out of the blue, but like Whiplash. I don't know if anyone's seen Whiplash. But oh, yeah. I definitely movie to watch. love that movie. It's like so hard to watch. Yeah. It's much like it's hard to read all 12 <laughs> and just like getting through it and seeing somebody who's so determined to make their art perfect. There's a connection there, I think. Yeah. yeah. Honestly, All's Well But Ends Well is like one of the um, least liked Shakespeare, I feel like. Yeah, it's so. one of the problem plays. Mm -hmm. I guess that is discussed in the book, but like nobody likes this yeah. play. <laughs> yeah. I remember I, it vaguely. Yeah. I don't think I've read specifically All's Well That Ends Well. I read, um, for a second, I, I actually confused this with uh, Measure for Measure, which also has the bed trick um they mention it in like this book in all's well um oh. about how all's well that ends well has the bed trick but measure for measure also has the bed trick what is the bed trick it's it's basically when it's consent is not a thing currently but um someone masquerades as someone else and goes into bed oh yeah oh. yeah so the bed trick in shakespearean um theater yeah, I, I had it confused that. for a little bit, but yes, it's one of the, the problems. I, I, need to, I need to read Measure for Measure. I've never done that. Measure for Measure is fun. It's got like a nun in it and a weird, ambiguous ending. Oh, well, you sold me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know why I led with it's got a nun in it. No, I mean, that's all you need to know. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I, oh, my God. One thing I did find interesting in All's Well, though, is the whole thing about calling um, Macbeth a Scottish play. I never knew that was a thing in theater. Um, mm -hmm. Like, I've studied Shakespeare, like, in school, but um, never, like, the theater side of it, I guess. So I never knew that people called Macbeth the Scottish play for, like, the taboo thing. Oh, interesting. One of my least favorite things that every single Shakespeare-inspired book does is talk about that. And I actually oh. hate it, how much it's talked about in all the books that I read. Like oh, every great. single YA that I pick up, especially who's like putting on a production of Shakespeare, they talk about it. They're like, you can't call it Macbeth. You can't say the words out loud. And I'm just like, oh, we get it. <laughs> wow. I obviously haven't read enough Shakespeare inspired stuff. I read too much of it and a lot of it is not good. Okay, I'm going to read through all of these recommendations later. I'm going to have to come back to this because there's so many things popping up. Um, I think we'll wrap it up. 40 minutes. That's always my goal. We did great. Oh my God, I'm so glad. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I just like talk and talk and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, you no, know, let's keep it concise. And I'm, I'm happy with everything we got to talk about. So um, thank you guys so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. Uh, anybody who is not subscribed to Aaron and Jen and me, their links are down below. And... Yeah, we'll see you for uh, the next live show next month. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much. <laughs>